What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and today we're gonna be checking out some awesome accessories for the iPad Pro. Now, of course, the new iPad Pro just dropped not too long ago with that new M1 chip. And today we're gonna be looking at a few products that are really gonna help you maximize your experience. And the first thing we're gonna take a look at is this guy over here, the Logitech Combo Touch. Now, Logitech was cool enough to sponsor today's video, but let me tell you guys, I actually really fell in love with this thing. And I'll be honest, I've been using Apple's uh, Magic Keyboard for a while now, since it came out. And this thing fixes a lot of the issues that I had with this guy. So first of all, you guys, this right here has a really nice fabric woven material. So it feels really good in the hand. It's nice and protected. But what I like about this setup beyond it offering more protection than this does is the fact that it's a lot more versatile as well. So you can go ahead and have it in a few different modes. So you have a typing mode where you have this like kickstand in the back. And if you're not looking to type, maybe you want to just use your Apple Pencil. You can take the kickstand back even further and do what you need to do over here. So that's dope. And when you're done using the kickstand, you can just tuck it away, use your iPad like this. This is something that I haven't been able to do with the Magic Keyboard. If I wanted to use the iPad in my hand, I'd have to take it off completely and then it's you know just exposed. This is a lot better. So it's cool to not have to worry about ever taking the case off and you've got that adjustable kickstand in the back. And check this out. You can go ahead, attach the keyboard, do what you need to do for typing. It's a nice feeling keyboard, but guys, this keyboard has something the Magic Keyboard is missing and that is this row up here. We've got shortcuts enabled for iPad OS. So you've got, of course, things like brightness controls. Jay is probably gonna kill me because I'm making it too bright. Got a nice little home button. Compress that, get out of apps. This, this is the game changer, I'm telling you. You've got the ability to use your search button right here. You can control the backlighting of the keyboard, play and pause music. All the shortcuts that were used to, volume controls, that kind of stuff, things that I have been missing on the Magic Keyboard, they're here. And not to mention, it also has a trackpad, so you can go ahead and control this the way you would with the normal trackpad. Uh, and you can even take off the keyboard, pop it on in the back, so you don't even have to completely dispose of it. You can just throw it on in the back, still use it like this. It has a spot for the Apple Pencil. So it, it covers all the bases. It's a solid, solid case, and it's a lot cheaper uh, than the Magic Keyboard. The only thing I'll say about this is that it can be a little tricky to open up when it's closed. It's a little bit hard to reach the keyboard and open it up like this, but if you learn to just kind of do it from the opening where the Apple Pencil is, it makes it a lot easier, so that's a little Pro tip for you guys, you can just kind of open it like that. Um, the only other thing about this is that it does have some pretty thick borders. So some accessories might give you a, a little bit of trouble to put inside of here, but for the most part, cables and everything work just fine. But for real guys, if you're looking for like a premium keyboard and case combo, uh, Logitech's got it. This thing is actually really impressive. So if you're interested, I'll have links down below in the description. This is definitely worth checking out. But we have, a few other things here as well, like, should we just, should we just go over there, Jay, to where the little iPad setup is? Uh, yes. I was gonna go anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so we got a little bit of a setup over here, nothing too crazy, you know, a little something simple. Uh, if you guys are interested in a serious setup with the iPad, let me know with a comment down below. I might have something in the works that you just might like, but, for right now, let's check out some of these accessories that we've got going on over here. Ah. So first and foremost, guys, this iPad right here is sitting on the Kensington Studio dock. Now, this is a dock for the iPad that's just kinda, it's kinda mind blowing, you guys. So not only can this thing prop up your iPad, but it'll also charge it over here. Let's take this thing off for a second. It'll also charge it over here. You have the ability to tilt the iPad into portrait mode. You can also tilt it however you please. So that's awesome. This thing is super high quality, very, very premium. And I like this because when you're, 
maybe illustrating or doing something with the Apple Pencil, you got a nice strong stand here that can support, you know, you putting some weight and pressure from the pen onto the screen. And not only is it just like a really solid stand for the iPad, but check this out. Down here, you have some built-in wireless charging. So you can throw a pair of AirPods in this little spot and you can see it's charging up. And if you have your phone, you can throw it on right there and boom, your phone is charging, AirPods are charging. You can charge multiple devices at once, but it doesn't just end there. When you go around to the back, and this thing is super sturdy, you guys can see moving it is not simple, but you also get three USB ports, an ethernet port, an HDMI port, as well as a headphone jack, an SD card reader, and on the other side, you've got a USB-C port here as well. So you'll pretty much feel like you're using a whole computer here uh, with all the IO that this dock provides. And it also has like an extra accessory so that you can go ahead, plug this thing in, and then you can throw an Apple Watch onto here to charge it. You can plug in a monitor and, you know, kind of just have multiple screens here. Like I said, the stuff setups are made of are all possible on an iPad. Now, this thing is not cheap. It is actually quite expensive. Jay, how much do you think it costs? Carl? It looks like 600. Okay, you're ODing, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> it's $379.99 which is a lot, you know, it's a dock. So yes, this thing is pretty expensive for an accessory, but I think anybody who has like invested in the iPad uh, Pro with M1 and they're looking to really take content creation seriously, this is a really great uh, investment in case you wanna do a little bit more than the standard stuff that you can with an iPad. And guys, one thing I will say, if you're looking at picking up the Kensington Studio dock, Definitely make sure you know which version you're getting. You're probably gonna want the newest one uh, because the original version does not support uh, the iPad with M1. So you're gonna want the newest one uh, that offers full support. So definitely keep an eye out for that. So I really like this thing, it just costs a lot, but it also helps in being able to like, you know, use a mouse and keyboard and just like have a whole setup going. Having something to control your cursor completely changes the way you use the iPad. Ever since they introduced the feature, I, I could not go back. I love using the iPad like this, whether it's from a trackpad or it's just like a mouse. You can even use the Magic trackpad if you'd like. If you've used like the Magic Keyboard or like the Logitech Combo Touch, uh, you'll see just how important a trackpad can be when using the iPad. And if you're not going that route and you want it to have like its own kind of setup, uh, I would recommend the Logitech MX Master 3. Uh, there's, you can use any mouse, but I like this one because not only does it feel good, uh, but you can also use like certain buttons to get a little more out of the mouse than just like your standard, you know, right, left click. Uh, you can do something like this where you can go ahead and just swap different apps. It just makes for a really, really nice experience. So this is personally my favorite mouse to use with the iPad. And if you don't wanna go the mouse route, you wanna use a trackpad, uh, Apple's. I mean, there's no better external trackpad that you can use with the iPad, so I would highly recommend this if you really need a trackpad. Now clearly the iPad is great as like a tablet, but you can clearly see that you can go in full setup mode, kind of use it like a regular computer. Uh, and when you're using a regular computer, you might wanna invest in some storage. Now. The iPad now offers up to two terabytes of storage, which is huge, but really expensive. And you can get much cheaper storage from companies like Samsung. Listen, Samsung makes really awesome SSDs, uh, you know, these external drives. I like the T7 uh, because it has like a touch sensor. If you get, you can opt for a version with the touch sensor. So if you want a little extra privacy, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, but I think stuff like that is huge. Just being able to take your drive, plug it into your iPad, and boom, you've got like just a whole extra like terabyte or two uh, just added on for much cheaper than what Apple sells built into the device. And it makes it easy to transfer things from the iPad over to like another machine. So yeah, you can get like the T5, T7 Touch. Uh, if you wanna go real crazy, you want some, some ridiculous speeds, 
you can always go for Samsung's X5. This is the bad boy right here. If you wanna get really, really fast speeds, you pick up one of these. Uh, these are not cheap, but these are absolutely worth it if you're like a serious content creator who needs really fast speeds on the go and lots of storage. This is what, two terabytes, right, Jay? Mm -hmm. Now, you know what? We did kind of talk about the Apple Watch charger built into the Kensington uh, Studio dock, but let's say, you know, forget the dock. You don't want to spend the money on it, right? You can actually still get the same kind of functionality from folks over at Satoshi. So they actually made a few devices. So back in the day, they came out with this, an AirPods charger right here that attaches to the iPad. So you can throw on your AirPods Pro and it's charging wirelessly, which is super cool. And not only that, they also made one for the Apple Watch. Now, obviously you would use this with some kind of stand and you just got a nice way to charge your Apple products uh, right from the iPad itself. So these are really cool. They're not very expensive, but Satoshi went and outdid themselves. And instead of making separate dongles like this, they created one that supports both. This is it guys. This is tech at its finest. <laughs> just being able to throw this in, charge your iPad, uh, your AirPods, or take it out, swap it over, charge your Apple Watch. If you are like in the Apple ecosystem, you got your Apple Watch, AirPods, whatever, this is a must. I absolutely recommend this. Can you charge both at the same time? Didn't we test that, Jay? Did we? We're gonna test it right now. <laughs> the one day I'm not wearing my Apple Watch. All right, now I don't even, this is not even really feasible here. It's nice because it's got magnets. So the Apple Watch is charging here. Let's see, AirPods. Uh, uh, nope. It's one at a time, Carl. It's genius, but it's not magic. Okay, Carl? Genius. <laughs> God, way to ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> now for me, if you have an iPad Pro, a lot of these things feel like essentials. I feel like this essential. A mouse that you can use with your iPad, I'd say is pretty essential. What's also an essential, I think, is having a game controller. Now you can probably use, uh, if you have a PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox controller, you can already use one of those. They work with the iPad. So you can go ahead and just pair this up using the PlayStation and the share button. And then you can go ahead and play things like Call of Duty. Let me show you, listen. Jay's gonna throw in some B-roll of me like just smacking these fools. Now, Carl thinks that it's an easy lobby, but he doesn't know I play Apex all day and my skills are crazy. Uh, but I say all that to say, you should get your hands on a controller because with a large screen like the iPad has, uh, it makes mobile gaming even more fun. And with Apple Arcade, you can get access to a ton of games that can use the controller and you just have like an overall nice experience. Uh, I've played a couple of games even on uh, the Apple TV using the uh, PlayStation controller and it's, it's actually pretty legit, you guys. I'd say if you haven't tried it yet, if you've got a PlayStation or Xbox lying around, pair your controller up to it, give it a shot. Could be kind of fun. But that about wraps up for this video, guys. I feel like a lot of these are no-brainers, but I wanted to specifically talk about some of the items that I think personally work really well with the iPad, especially, like I said, if you're getting one that has the M1 chip and you're trying to do a little bit more with it, we're moving into this thing being like a real laptop replacement. Uh, so we're getting into that territory and I just want you guys to be able to be set up uh, to have the best experience. But that wraps up for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be the cool guy or girl that gives this video a thumbs up. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Till then, it's your average consumer. Peace. If you guys haven't seen my iPad only challenge video, I'll have that link down below in the description. That one was kind of wild.